Hello and welcome to Medic Talk. I'm Daniel Lohaigbe, also known as Dan the Medic, and this is a series where I bring people in or pursuing a career in medicine. So that would be medical students, medical doctors, etc., to discuss different topics relating to medicine. What location comes to your mind when you hear the term medical doctor? A health clinic? A hospital? A medical school? Well, you're not wrong for thinking about those, but the wilderness needs doctors as well. Today, I am an expedition doctor who will talk about her incredible job and life as a doctor in the wilderness. Let's get into the video. Hello and welcome to another episode. Um, here with me today is Dr. Becca Salomon. She's the Foundation Year 3 doctor in the UK. Um, doctor, you're welcome to Medic Talk. Hello, thank you for having me on the podcast today. Yeah, you're welcome. So now, if anyone out there is like me, they've only until now seen an expedition doctor, probably in movies. I believe a good question to begin with is, who is an expedition doctor? Yeah, I feel like not many people know what an expedition doctor is and to be fair, I actually didn't know what an expedition doctor was before about a year ago. Mm. Um, but the definition of an expedition doctor is basically someone who looks after people on an expedition or a trip um, mm. or people in a remote or austere environment. So there's lots of different types of expedition doctor, but it's basically working outside of the hospital in more of a pre-hospital situation. Mm. That's pretty interesting. So, yeah. um, can you talk a bit of, uh, about um, what it entails, like um, um, expeditions? I believe expeditions are usually in the, uh, in the jungle, in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So, just talk a bit about uh, what kind of uh, situations you encounter. Yeah, so... Um, expeditions at the moment, they're like a much more like up and coming thing that's happening um, and because everyone's suddenly wanting to travel more, go abroad more and this is people either like climbing mountains or going to the jungle like I've recently done or going to the desert or even just going out into the more of the wilderness like in the UK we have just Wales or Scotland so just going slightly remotely and because people want to do that safely, they obviously want a doctor to come along with them. Like if you are in a remote or austere environment like the jungle, there's obviously a lot more risks. So yes. you're gonna want someone to come along with them. And I think that this is why it's becoming a lot more up and coming compared mm. to what it used to be. So I feel like expedition doctor, the term of it, is gonna become a lot more popular over the next mm. couple of years. Um, and what it kind of entails for me is you would someone come to you and say, okay, we need you to come on this expedition, on this trip, mm. or come work not in the hospital. Mm. And so then you have to then assess the risks mm. and figure out what kind of medication or illnesses that could occur on an expedition. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Very interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So um, can I ask what influenced your decision to choose expedition medicine? Yeah, so as you can tell, like expedition medicine is not really the day to day. It's not, it's not working in a hospital. Like, mm. what we do when we're at medical school is you go to a hospital, you do placements, you do rotations, whether that's in general practice, whether that's in cardiology mm. or surgery, everything's done in a hospital. Mm. And I kind of was going to going to placement, going to med school, doing my foundation years, mm. and I'm not going to lie to you, I did not really enjoy it mm. <laughs> whatsoever. Um, as I briefly mentioned before, like, I just, I didn't like being in a hospital. Mm. And suddenly it got to like going to A&E mm. and doing the more emergency things. And I was like, ooh, that, 
This is a bit more, a bit more exciting. Yeah. I was like, there's actually things going wrong. And A&E, um, in the UK, it's not technically part of the hospital, it's technically part of, part of the public. You're mm. seeing people straight away out of the ambulances, straight away off the streets. Mm. And so it's getting that bit more outside the hospital environment. Mm. And then eventually I heard from a &E people that, oh, you can actually do pre-hospital stuff. You can actually do things outside the hospital. Mm. And it's certain you're getting me more emergency situations. And that mm. really like, um, what's the word? That really just resonated with me. And I was like, oh, this sounds a lot more interesting and a lot more dramatic than doing a ward run in the hospital. Mm. That's very, very interesting. It's very interesting. So I guess my next question would be um, what the pros and the cons of expedition medicine are, because I know um, the situation out there is not all rosy. <laughs> you go to places that you might not have access to all your medical supplies as you have in the hospital. So uh, I'm already outlining some cons. So just tell me, mm -hmm. um, what are what are what are the pros and then um, some other cons that I've not mentioned? Yeah, so obviously when I was going into it, looking at all the, the pros of mm. what an expedition doctor would entail, and it's it's you, you get to be outside the hospital. You don't have to mm. do boring ward rounds every day. I think something that medical students often say is. Oh, being a doctor is different every day and I'm sure mm. like you hear that all the time as well mm. but actually when you're going to placement every day or you're being a doctor every day it becomes quite monotonous mm. like it is actually very similar you come across very similar situations and so I think one of the pros people used to say about being a doctor is it you see something different every day which you do but for me I found that to become repetitive mm. and I found that on expeditions it really was different every day because you're going, you're in a new place every single day and you mm. actually are seeing new things. Um, so it is a lot more stimulating from yes. that point of view. Um, you obviously get to travel more depending on where you get to go. Mm. Um, so whether that's just a different part of the country or whether that goes abroad, you get to see a lot more. So that's a massive pro of it too. Mm. Um, and it's just, it's exciting. It's yes. like you get to meet a lot of new people. You are working mm. with people every day um, and you don't really have a routine. Mm. Um, so they're all like the pros of it. Obviously, I think it speaks for itself. If you're getting to travel the world, like you can't really say that that's a bad thing. But then when looking at the cons mm. of expedition medicine, I think that all those pros are massive cons as well mm. because you're not having a routine. Mm. You, you don't know when your next work's coming from. Mm. You don't really know anyone you're working with. You don't know mm. where you're going. There is, there's so much unknown, which yes. can be fun, but it's, there's so much more risk. Mm. So that is a massive con of expedition medicine and event work. Interesting. So, um... I think from uh, your explanation, you kind of pointed out um, who would want to do expedition medicine <laughs> from your explanation. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe there are some other um, peculiarities in, let's say, medical students that will like incline them or make them want to even want to uh, pursue the routes of expedition medicine. So in general, who would you recommend expedition medicine to? Yeah, so from looking at like, the pros and the cons, who I'd recommend expedition medicine to is someone who likes a bit more excitement, doesn't really like the routine, mm -hmm. thinks on their feet a bit more. You have to be very aware of what's going on and liking the risk. I think when you look at people who want to do medicine versus surgery versus mm -hmm. GP versus A&E, Yes. We, you can spot them in your medical school, but who's going to go into what? True. And it's the people who prefer like the general practice, the A&E, mm. a bit more having a freedom, no routine. They're mm. the people who normally go into expedition medicine. Mm. The, when looking at all my expedition colleagues, they are all general practice or A&E because you have a bit more flexibility in the way you work and also you need to have a very general um, medical knowledge. 
there's no point in having just a cardiologist off on an expedition because what if someone gets like a cut on their foot or has I don't know some altitude sickness etc you need someone who's a lot more varied and know all their systems and you find that people who are specialised into one particular thing then they struggle to have knowledge on everything else so you need to probably general practice people who are more suited for it and then yeah definitely people who want to travel don't want the routine don't necessarily want to settle down Mm. I think it attracts a certain type of person. <laughs> That's very interesting. So, let's say I wanted to become um, an expedition doctor. How do I go about that? Yeah. So, how to be an expedition how, how to be an expedition doctor is probably like the biggest question that I get asked every single day. Um, like every day, I get messages on Instagram saying like, "How do I actually become one?" Because I think even though it's like now people are starting to be aware of what an expedition doctor is, mm. everyone's like, mm, but you, you can't just take a course in it. <laughs> it's not, not like true. you can just do a specialty, you can become a core yeah. trainee in expedition medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, so when looking at, say like, you're a medical student now, mm. if you're a medical student and you want to become an expedition doctor or do pre-hospital medicine or do stuff outside the hospital, The best thing to probably do is to sign up to your Wilderness Wilderness Medical Society. Mm. Um, So most universities have them in the UK. I'm not sure what it's like um, in other places around the world. Um, But I know that in a lot of countries now, they do have ones where they have a a remote medicine or emergency medicine or wilderness medicine society. Mm. And they then normally take you on trips around the country and practicing more like pre-hospital trauma scenarios. Mm. They take you to events and conferences which would then get you to meet the right people because Mm. a lot of it is when it comes to getting jobs is networking. Mm. Um, It's very much like kind of who you know not what you know. Mm. Like I know that if I go do something and I chat to someone, then they'll be like, oh, there's a job here, 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 here. But mm. until you get chatting to the similar people, you're not going to actually know about what the opportunities are. Yes. So first thing you need to do in med school, sign up to the Wilderness Medical Society. You'll be around like-minded people and they'll start teaching you the basics of what you need to know. Mm. You also then have to be quite active, I reckon. Um, Mm. unless you're doing an event work which you can normally set in a base if you're doing like an expedition Mm. you're going to be hiking you're going to be climbing you're going to be trekking through a jungle you're going to be trekking through the desert Mm -hmm. you need to be active so keeping up with your fitness is probably one like a really Mm. key thing to be doing like you have to actually have an interest in being outdoorsy Mm -hmm. Um, and then what you can do then is start going on courses. Um, mm. I'm not sure what they're like outside the UK again, but in the UK yeah, you can just talk about the UK in particular since that is where um, okay you are That's based. Um, so in the UK we have lots of like wilderness medicine courses, mm. whether they're specialists in um, like leadership or in going abroad to. In snowy conditions or mountainous mm. conditions or jungle conditions and they can be as cheap as what, 200 pounds which for some people can be like mm. a big ass but that's actually relatively cheap for what you're asking for a wilderness medical course mm. and they can only teach you these, the things you need to know the issue with trying to get a job in expedition medicine is that they're not going to hire you for a job Mm. unless you've been in that environment but but to get into that environment Mm -hmm. it's kind of like a (laughs) catch-22 does that make sense yeah 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 so no one's going to hire you to work in the arctic if you haven't been to the arctic Mm. but then that means you've got to pay to go to the arctic Mm. before so it becomes very expensive um, mm. So unless you're knowing people and talking to people mm. to kind of wrangle your way in. Like for mm. instance, I 
went to the jungle and worked as a medic there this year. Mm. I'd never been to the jungle before. It was because wow. I'd been on a different wilderness medicine course and then mm. spoken to someone and then they were like, come along to the jungle and we'll support you. So it is quite tricky. You normally do have to pay on to go on courses. Mm. And then this is where it becomes a bit more expensive and it becomes very particular about who the kind of person it attracts to because mm. it's not necessarily the most inclusive thing to do. Yes which is very unfortunate, but mm. if that's kind of the situation it is at the moment. So doing the cheaper courses and go, joining a wilderness medicine society where it's a lot cheaper mm. were the ways to go for a medical student. Mm. Very interesting, very, very interesting. Sorry, I feel like I'm rambling on there completely. No, 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 no. I love all the information. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very good. Well, thank um, you so much. Thank yeah. you and so much. Some, the cheap, yeah, go on. The ch no, oh, sorry. The the cheaper ways to get into like expedition medicine are like sending your CV off everywhere. Mm. Um, there's free webinars you can do, mm -hmm. um, and just working on your own like survival skills and wilderness skills. Mm. All you need to do is go on YouTube, look up how to make a fire, how mm. to f go fishing. Which is on your page, to... by the way. I'll link your Instagram <laughs> in the description. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if yeah. you want to know how to make a fire with one match, then I will teach you that. <laughs> yeah. But it's like little things like that, like you, when you're being an expedition doctor, you're not just being a doctor on the expedition, you're also teaching all the survival skills as well. So mm. working on your own personal survival and medical skills is only going to help. Mm. But yeah, difficult to get into, but yeah. if you know how, I feel it can help. <laughs> It's, uh, it sounds like a very, very interesting interesting thing to do because uh, I personally am not a huge fan of traveling around, but um, I like um, things that are outside the status quo. So it's, it's, it's pretty interesting and I might say, I'm, I must say it's quite tempting, but we'll see when we get there. We'll see when mm. we get there. All right, we've come to the end of this episode. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Check out the official Dan the Medic website and blog for more useful content. Um, Dr. Becker, like I said, can be found on Instagram. I feel it's very interesting. The links to everything mentioned is in the description box below. And uh, without further ado, goodbye and take care of yourselves. <laughs>